to the Ice Kitchens and for our MasterChef series with our guest chefs. Today, pretty excited, we have uh, Mr. Dean Brewer here. Hello. He's the executive sous chef of the Royal International Convention Centre at the RNA Showgrounds here in Brisbane. First time you've been at Ice? Yes, it is. What yep. do you think of the place? Stunning. It's pretty good. Stunning. Yeah, thanks. We have invited Dean in because he's a master at lots of things in the kitchen, in particular salmon. We've got a beautiful salmon given to me by my friends at Tassel today. So thanks Stevie K for that. I'm sure Dean's going to take us through quite a few steps of the points of interest to seafood. Yeah, most definitely. We'll, we'll run through the, the, the main points and little tips that I've gained across the way. And we're then going to hope we're going to obviously fillet, take the fillets off. So it's going to show you some fillets and skills and a little bit of pin boning and trimming. And then I believe you're going to make some uh, beautiful masterpiece of a roulade of salmon in a sous vide machine. You're going to yes, yep, 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 yep. We'll trim down the side. We'll, we'll, we'll butterfly it. We'll do some seasoning, some fresh herbs we've got here, a little bit of citrus because it goes a long way, cuts through the oil. And then we'll, um, we'll make a nice ballantine and then we'll pop it over there in our sous vide and Perfect. So come out with a beautiful product. Get some, sorry, you're not only going to get some great seafood tips, you're going to learn how to fillet the salmon, how to debone it or pin bone it as we say. You've got the Fort Myers or eyebrow treaters in today. You're going to give those a go, pin boning. Let's get and them sanitised, guys. Give me sanitised, of course. And then we're going to trim down that salmon. We're going to, as Dean said, very poetically, we're going to make a beautiful roulade kind of ballantine. You're going to also see how to sous vide. It might be the first time that you, some of you may have seen that technique. It's used very widely these days as a really gentle cooking method. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Dino, he's the master here. I'm going to take a back step, unusual for me, but true. But anyway, over to you, Dino, the floor is yours. Lovely, thank you, okay. thank you very much. Okay, guys, today we're tackling this beautiful beast. Okay, so here we've got a beautiful fresh salmon. Um, I'm sure when you come through first year, you got all those key points about fresh fish. What are we looking for? Look them in the eyes. Beautiful, shiny, clear eyes. Nice and bright red inside here. We all know that trick. Nice and firm. We're checking inside. It still has that nice slime on it as well. Okay, so we can feel, have a look in here. We can see it's nice and clean. This one's been cleaned and already scaled, but it's, it, 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 this one's a, a, a beautiful fresh fish. So what we're gonna do, I guess the, the best way of tackling something like this is Having a, have, having a reasonably sharp knife, um, and I always have a nice dry cloth handy as well, so we can be wiping the fish down, wiping down our workspace as well, because it is, it is a big task, but keeping our workspace nice and clear and tidy is, is, is one of the key points. Always try and order, when you order your fish, make sure they leave the head, in, head on for you, because hey, that, that is, uh, that, that's two or three key points just in the head there of how fresh your fish is, so that's, it's, it's, it's something there to look for. Okay, so we're gonna come in first right up, nice and tight, up around the top of the, uh, the, the fins, in around, it's like, it's a bit like a jawbone, okay? But it's going around the back of the, back of the head there, and you'll, don't go too hard, just go nice and soft, and you'll come through, and you'll just start to touch the back and the, uh, the spine of the fish, which is running right through the center. Okay, so now what the next task is, we have got to run our knife down the back of the fish, okay? Now there's several techniques. You can cut down the back of the fish and then come back across. But for this purpose, we're just gonna try and go, I've seen it done in one clear swoop. I was in, where was I? I was in Seattle fish market. So one guy there grabbed a whole sockeye salmon, took this fish, bang, took the side off. And I'm like going, he's been doing that for more than a week. Okay, so this time, We'll do it nice and slowly so we can go through the steps. So what I'm doing here is just lifting the belly, keeping my fingers clear, okay? And then we're gonna start, and my key point really here is let the knife do the work, okay? So then you're just running down the back of the spine, you're feeling, you're just feeling your knife run across the, um, um, the cartilage and the spine of the, of the salmon. Keep your knife nice and flat. And you can hear it just cutting through the spine there, across the top of the dorsal fin. Okay, now what I find, I just get past the dorsal fin, 
and then I'll move down to here just to add a little bit of firm and pressure on the fish there and it just keeps it in shape, okay? Because once you get down here, we're starting to get a little bit, it's moving around a little bit, so we just add a little bit of pressure here. We're coming right down to the tail and off, okay? So then, once again, we can take the side off and then you've got your full fillet of salmon coming straight off the fish, okay? Key point is to keep that knife nice and straight and just minimize. You can see here where we've just run down the, the, the salmon here um, and uh, down the spine and then you can see here where we've got it nice and flat and it's got a beautiful nice shape as well. Okay guys, we're just gonna go through and we'll go through and do a little bit of pin boning and just trimming up this side of salmon, okay? So, we can just go in underneath there. Now it's a bit like, I guess it, it's the rib cage, okay? So we're just, once again, let your knife do the work. We just shave down there, removing some of the fat, the cartilage. Okay, starting from up here. As you can see, trying to keep as much of that red and orange flesh as possible, because that's what we want to use. Down the line. Okay, and across that little bit of belly fat. Okay, next thing is pin boning. So all these little bones that go down the middle of the fillet. So. If you run your fingers down the middle of them, you can feel them as you go down. So a little tip is to start with, just gently. You don't want to be pulling and ripping and, and damaging the, the, the fish. So just run your, your knife down the, down the fillet to start with. A pair of tweezers, small piece of equipment, but very important for this job. And then it is just going along and pin boning. Okay, so it's just pulling them out with the tweezers. They're very, very fine little bones, so we don't want that to go to the table. So this process is used for if you're cooking, curing, poaching, steaming. This is all basic mise en place on the side of salmon or any side of fish, okay? So what you'll see now when I'm pin boning, support the flesh so you're not pulling, because if you pull it, you're gonna do a little bit of damage to the fish. So just a little gentle one there, one there. Get a little bit thicker here. We can just still feel them. And you can see by the, 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 the muscle and the connective tissue that's sort of running down there, you start to get the idea of exactly where every single little pin bone is. Okay, and then you can feel, I think as you can see there, we've got them all lined up there. We put them on our, on our tray, double check. And I'm happy that most of those, sometimes, oh, here's one here. So at the head of the fillet, sometimes right up behind the, the salmon don't have ears, but right up in behind their gills, you'll see sometimes there's a couple in there that you just need to, to grab as well. Okay, tweezers down. Okay, we can come across here, shave off this little bit of cartilage and fat that runs down the side. What else have we got here? Done there. And then down the middle here, you can see a little bit of cartilage. So then it is just running your knife down there. Once again, don't put too much pressure. Let your nice sharp knife do the work. Little V shape down there. Take that out. And that out there. And I believe we've got a beautiful piece or a beautiful side of salmon there. Okay, so once we've cleaned, once we've cleaned the fish, removing the skin. Now this is, this, is, this is a technique. My tip is do not use your sharpest knife. 
<laughs> reason being four, once you start to go in, as you, I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it, huh? So I usually go through towards my fingers to start with and then turn back. There's a little bit of bloodline there. It's removing that little bloodline. And then it gives you just enough to run your fingers in underneath. And then you can see now we can got something to hang on to. Try not to lift it at the moment. Let the knife do the work, okay? We're letting the knife, don't pull the skin at the moment. Just let the knife do the work. Laying your knife, I'd probably say we're looking around about 30 degrees maybe, 30 degrees there, and then just little cuts working our way down the side of the salmon. Once you get a good grip, then you can get a good grip and take a little bit more control. Same technique, little, little slicing, little cutting. Now the reason I just mentioned before about a very sharp knife, if you're carrying a very sharp knife like razor sharp, if there's a little, little slip, it'll, it'll run straight through the skin and you won't get it off in one piece. It, it's not urgent or, sorry, it's not important, but it, it helps the whole case. So once I get down towards the head of the fish, and I think I've cut through the skin, I'm just pulling on the skin a little bit just to get a little bit of resistance. I hope we got our fingers crossed. Boom. Okay, so there, we have a little bit left on there, okay? And then what I'm looking for over here, I've sort of gone at least a millimetre up to minimise my, to, to get maximum bloodline off. So then when I go across the other side, I'm not doing as much um, cutting and a little bit more bloodline. So that's the skin. Okay then, so as we can see, we're fortunate enough this time to get the skin off in one piece. Okay, and then minimal, minimal um, a wastage on there as well. And if, if, you, if you can see here slightly, you can just see where we've just started to remove some of the bloodline from, from the underside of the salmon. So the next step is to just sort of remove some of this bloodline. So when we're doing the, um, the roulade, if we've got that dark flesh in there, it'll just be highlighted during the cooking process. And, and it's really for for presentation things, uh, point of view, just to make it a little bit more um, presentable and it looks better to the eye for your, for your customers. So what we'll do now is start up from one end and it is just like slicing, carving, shaving, I guess, a little bit of a combination of each just to remove that bloodline and maximizing the red flesh of the salmon. Now this salmon is a beautiful fresh piece. It's nice and firm, so it's, it is um, allowing for this technique to be a little bit easier. As you get down towards the tail, you can see the bloodline is a little bit thicker and you'll probably find, depending on where, what part of the world you, you're cooking or preparing your salmon, the bloodline will be thicker in different parts. So for instance, these guys come from down south around Tasmania, cold water, but I know from my experience of um, uh, working and receiving salmon in Alaska, the bloodline was a lot, lot thicker on the fish. So it took a lot more effort to get the bloodline removed on like a sockeye salmon or a coho. So once again, we'll come back the other way. And it is a matter of just shaving that bloodline out. It's coming off nicely. Great fish supply here at ice, I think. Look at that. And there is some jobs in the kitchen, guys. It's always rush, 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 get ready for service, get ready for service. This sort of task, I think you've, you've sort of, you don't want to take all day doing it, but you've, you've, you want to make sure that you, you're not trying to make your salmon ballantine half an hour before you're going on your break, because it ain't going to happen, okay? It's got to, it's got to have a bit of love. Right, okay, well, I'm, I'm happy with that. So then we can turn it over. And basically there, we can sort of... I'd probably say go close to saying that we've nearly got our salmon nicely trimmed down. So once you've got all the trimming done, 
just give it a good wipe and just keep your eye out for any scales or anything like that as well on your fish. Maybe you may have missed a pin bone, go back, remove the pin bone, um, scale, skin, just make sure your fish is beautiful, beautiful, nice and clean, which this one is. All right then, so now we're up to the preparation or as we know, a mise en place, getting everything in place, having everything ready to go for our salmon ballantine. So fairly straightforward, we've got what, one, two, three, four, five, five, six different ingredients here for this one. So we've got some beautiful fresh dill here that we've got. So the fresh dill, we've got some um, lemons, which will microplane as well. And then here, what we've done is got some, um, some peppercorns and fennel seeds. Now fennel, it's a beautiful, beautiful spice. Now to, to enhance it, especially to go with this salmon, um, we've toasted them. I mean, we've even lightly toasted the white peppercorns as well. So once we lightly toasted them, we can, a um, little bit of old school, introduce you to mortar and pestle. So we, put, we can put both our hard spices in there together. So we've got the fennel seeds and the white peppercorns. It's always advisable to use a white peppercorn when using seafood. You also see here, I've got a, um, um, a little cloth underneath my uh, mortar and pestle. Reason being is these do a lot of damage to a stainless steel workbench. So you really need to look after your workspace and your workbenches and a, and, a, and a little cloth underneath is the solution. So now, now as we're giving these guys a good old grind in here, you can really get the perfume coming out from that fennel and the toasted. Bit of a workout too. Right, so I'm, I'm happy with that. It doesn't need to be super, super fine. If, hey, if you really wanted to make it super, super fine, we can run it through a drum sieve so you've got like a fennel dust. And you could do that if you're finishing, even if you're plating the, the ballantine at the end, you could do a little fennel dust and toast your seeds, put them through a drum seed and then lightly dust the fin at the end. Perfect, smells beautiful. Right, so. A little bit of fresh component coming on board now. Now we're gonna go through. Now sometimes you might think, oh, I'll just chop the whole lot. I believe that there's a reason for picking herbs. The, the, especially for this one here, guys, because it's gonna be nice and fresh. So we're looking for that real freshness. If we start putting the stalks through the ballantine, it just gives, it's, it's it doesn't break down. It's not gonna break down during the soft cooking process. So it, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit too hard on the, on the bite if your guest bites into it and you've got a big chunk of it because it's quite a strong herb. Go through, nice sharp knife. As I mentioned before, sometimes some jobs need a really sharp knife. Other jobs, <laughs> not so. For this job, you need a nice sharp knife because you want to be slicing the fresh herb, you don't want to be bruising it. These are smelling quite sensational too. So we can grab another bowl. So fresh dill. There we go, fresh dill. What we do. Or microplane lemon. So I, I, especially when I'm using salmon, because it's a high oil f um, content seafood or fish, um, a lot of citrus really complements it really, really well. Okay, when we've produced this dish in the restaurant, we've actually done like a, a, a citrus creme fraiche, or a, um, I think last time I did like a pink grapefruit foam to go with it. So really citrusy and something a little bit bitey. So I'm happy to say, and with that side of salmon, I'd probably say about two lemons, the zest of two lemons. We won't use the juice today because that'll, the citrus part of the juice will probably cure the fish too, too quick for us. So we just need that soft zest. And you can see the zesting is not just going everywhere around the citrus. I'm working my way around it, okay? Reason being, I'm getting the maximum zest from my piece of citrus. 
and um, it's, it's, it's a system that I've, I was taught. Okay, so there, as you can see now, we have all the zest off. We haven't gone too deep, we haven't hit the pith, so we've not got that bitter coming through either. So we'll have a beautiful citrus flavour coming through. So we can zest the top, the bottom. Right, and then we'll start around. So it's from the bottom, work our way up to the top. Systems, always have systems, they told me. <laughs> now one thing you're missing out on is, is the smell and the perfume coming from th this fresh dill. I'm still getting that toasted fennel and then now I've got this fresh citrus coming through. So there's like three or four simple ingredients already making a, showing their face and really showing what they can be, what they're bringing to the table, isn't it? They're bringing those flavors and perfumes and taste that we can go along with and add to our salmon. So that's our second lemon done. So, maximizing the zest. Okay, and then you can see it's not too deep. We haven't hit the pith there to get the bitterness. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're missing out. Okay guys, next step is we're going to sort of butterfly our salmon. The reason for this is so we have an even nice flat piece of salmon, okay? because um, we want to roll it, we want to get consistency, we want to get that roulade, the nice size, right across, okay? So obviously then when we're portioning it, every single portion is the same, okay? So yes, our fish is nice and thick here and nice and thin there. Let's have a look and see how we go and get that consistency across the board. So I usually start from the middle of the fish, run down that spine, Okay. okay, and as you can see then now, we can just go, and as I said before, there's no rush. It's like just rolling the knife down the inside, down to the end. And then, as you can see, we can open it up. And usually when we're going through this stage, you'll know that you've got pin bones or not. So if you feel a pin bone, stop, go back, grab your tweezers and take it out because hey, it's better us finding it than the customer sitting at the table. Okay. And it's usually, you'll, you'll cut through probably three quarters of the way horizontally. Okay, so now you can see where that sort of, sort of butterfly it open. And then come back the other side of the fillet. Okay, so then now, go a little bit further there. Maybe go back there. So now we're starting to get a little bit of thickness of the salmon through there. Okay. Okay guys, so now we've sort of, we've butterflied our salmon. So we've got a little bit more smooth in there and a little bit more consistency. Now we'll, I'll just touch on a little technique as well, which might, might help just in case. And I usually go through this technique. It's not urgent, but it's a good little tip to have. We take our cling film, fold it in half. Cling film always sticks to cling film. And what we're going to do is just place the cling film on top. Now we've like a meat mallet or a little flat paddle mallet, a little weight, something that's got a little bit of weight in it. Just go along, you don't need to belt it, it's already dead, just a nice little tap. And it just smooths out that salmon.
And you can see on the thicker sides there, I'm sort of hitting down and away. So that's just helping just the push and just break down a little bit of those sinews, just to push and have to help the fish. Just a little heavy massage, we'll call it. Okay, so we've got that. Move it up here. Okay, so now we're starting to get a nice piece of... There we go. And then, if we have a look at that, and we might be able to get a little close up on this one, we can see the surface now of that salmon is really starting to look a little bit flatter. So, and that helps when it comes down to rolling that ballantine. Okay, as you can see, we, we did our lemon and our dill. We've got our little spices happening here as well. Now, what I'm going to do is flip the fish over because now this is a nice, beautiful uh, uh, red side. Now, on the inside here, now we've removed 90, 95% of the bloodline. The little bit there as well. And as you can see, the sinew there is a little bit thicker. So what we need to do, we can start adding some of our seasoning and flavoring. Now, once again, with this, it's about consistency. Nice and even, okay? We can get it nice and even because you don't want a big mouthful of lemon or dill, but you want it to work nicely and balance it nicely against the fat content in our, in our Atl Atlantic salmon. Okay, so then we've got our salmon, our lemon over here. The fennel and the pepper just being toasted. Okay, so we can lightly season our salmon with that. And what I'm actually doing now, guys, I can smell the, the lemon and the dill. I'm adding the fennel and the pepper, and I think cooking's about senses. So now my, my senses are working. They, they're smelling the lemon, the pepper, the fennel, all working together. So it's a sort of little bit of a natural thing, um, just getting that balance right. So we've seasoned up that. And let's introduce a little bit of sea salt. So sea salt flakes, once again, guys, nice, even, seasoning consistency across the top of our, our fillet of fish. Okay. Right. So now our fish is ready to be rolled. Okay guys, here we go. This is the technique. Rolling a roulade. We've done all the hard work, all the mise en place done, our fish is looking beautiful, it's beautiful season, the, the aromats that are working away there with it. So now, what we're we going to do, first step is make sure you've got a beautiful, nice, clear workspace, okay? Because this does take up a bit of room. So, first thing is laying down our cling film. Now the key is here to have a nice, clean bench Reason being is, as you can see, what we're doing now is making the cling film stick to the bench, because that's going to help us roll. It's going to help to get that tension when we start to roll the uh, roulade. So all the air bubbles and all air pockets are in there. We squeeze them all out. Okay, so that's the one layer. I'm going to go two layers. Nice, have a little bit of security. So we'll go two layers on here. And my tip is for this one as well, don't get a walloping great big cling film. Get a nice half roll, three quarter used. That makes the job so much easier. Okay, once again, second layer down, air bubbles out. And again, so now, that is plenty of, plenty of cling film down. All the air bubbles are out. Now with this guy, 
we've seasoned the, 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 the top. Just lightly season the, uh, the cling film where you're going to place your piece of salmon. Okay, so then now we can introduce our salmon. Okay, so now that salmon, I'm placing it um, probably a, a quarter of the way up the cling film, leaving myself a little bit of room here for this one. Okay, so now what we do, we, we grab our cling film, and then what we're gonna try and get to happen is that flat piece of salmon to actually roll inside the cling film for us. So we grab it, and there we go. We can start to bring our tails over, so make the whole cling film, the whole, the whole piece rolls all together. Keep hold of the cling film. You don't want the cling film inside the fish. And as you can see, that salmon is starting to roll. And we're starting to get the guy to roll over and over, and I'm holding the, uh, the cling film up. I get to the end, and then what I do is gently bring back my cling film, stick it back onto the, uh, the workspace, bring down that piece of salmon, down to about a quarter of the way up the cling film again, and then sort of starting the process again. But this time, cling film over, cling film over, make sure your tails are sticking out nicely. Now what we're doing now is the advantage of the cling film sticking to the bench. We're slightly, with little light fingers, just pulling that fish towards yourself, okay? Just to build up that little bit of resistance to keep the fish nice and tight, keep the cling film nice and tight. So then we start the rolling, every roll just pulling that cling film in and the fish in towards yourself. You don't want to go too hard because you don't want to have a split or a hole in your cling film. And away we go. So now what we're looking at is a piece of salmon that's been rolled in the cling film. It's got a nice little bit of pressure there. Now what we're going to do is bring the cling film in and we're going to tie each end of the cling film, okay? Reason being is, it's going to help to get that consistency in the shape of the fillet of fish that's inside, and it will stop the, uh, the, the water from the water bath getting in. So, this is my technique. It may work for you. So, grab the, sorry, first way. We just twist, give it a little bit of half twists, and then just roll your salmon. Now with this one here, you'll see this end's a little bit smaller than this end at the moment, okay? So this is where it's sort of the control point, okay? So then you're rolling your salmon, okay? Pinching and rolling at the end. Having a knot in the end. So now, just a standard knot in the end, but when you're pulling the tension on the knot, what you need to do is grab the tail of the cling film and then place your fingers there and pulling that knot as close to the fish as possible. Okay, get it nice and tight. So now you have that point right there. It's nice and tight up against the fish and it's nice and firm. So now we've got to do the other end. So this is, the, this is another key point here that we're looking for. This one here, once again, we can roll it and squeeze your salmon a little bit. Okay, we're looking for the consistency and the size. Okay, so nice and gentle, rolling, keeping an eye on it, make sure it's the same size all the way along the, uh, the roulade. Okay. Boom, like that. Then once again, it's tying that knot, keeping the pressure there, okay? You don't want it to untie, undo. This one's quite important as well. Holding that knot in there, got your finger, you've got your tail of your cling film, and then pulling it in as close to that fish at the end as possible. So then, you've got a nice, okay? Trim the ends off so it looks nice and tidy, so it looks like you know what you've done. 
And then you've got a beautiful salmon roulade there ready to go into the sous vide. And a good way is, you see me rolling it backwards and forwards on the bench. If one end was bigger than the other, it would go that way. But the consistency there and the portion size for that salmon there is ready to go into the sous vide bath. Okay guys, so now we've got our beautiful salmon ballantine. What we're going to do is just add another little technique of, of, of trussing. You may have heard of it. It's where we introduce some butcher's twine or a, not, or, or a twine that we can use. Now, a lot of it is used in butchery for trussing pieces of meat, uh, trussing lamb legs when they're boned out, but you can also apply that technique to um, seafood as well. Um, so what we're going to do, the reason for it here is when we're cooking with the cling film, sometimes the uh, the protein inside may just sort of swirl, which will make the cling film bubble, and we don't want that to happen, because if it starts to bubble, it'll be uneven cooking through the, through the fish. So, Okay, so then we can tie off first. Nice, secure tie at the end. Now, there's, there's actually two ways of looking at doing trussing as well. So there is where you can just use the one piece of string, the one full length, which that method I can probably get away with, with here. Or there is the other method where you can go along and just do the one and then go along and do another one. Now, you might think, hang on a sec, isn't it easier just to do it the one? Where I apply using the individual little piece of string and each tying is usually when I'm doing red meats or doing uh, a, a protein that's going onto like a grill. So the reason being is if I put it on the grill and the grill burns that piece of twine, I'm only losing one piece. If you've done the one piece truss right down your salmon or your roulade, the whole lot's going to come undone. So it's just a little technique. For this purpose here, guys, we can just use the one piece so we can go back, okay, so say if that burnt, bang, it's one piece we've lost, we haven't lost the other, and it still has the tension. Okay, so, so we don't want to have it too tight, we just want to have a little bit of pressure on there, just to, here we go. Okay, so then what we're doing, we loop it around our hand, over the end, slide it along to where you require, take up a little bit of pressure, loop it over, slide it down your ballantine, nice even intervals. Okay, and this is just preventing that cling film from, from bubbling, bubbling up. Okay, as you can say, we can see here, we're just getting a little bit of tension on there. Okay, and we might get one or two more on. We'll put one at the end. And then, what we do, we just tie it off at the end. Which way did it go? That way, so we can go around. Under. Right, and then we can just secure it around the end there. And as you can see there now, we have got a nice piece of salmon. It's nice and even, and it's gonna hold it there, stop it bubbling, and keep that consistency in that shape, which I've mentioned previous time. So next step is sous vide. So here we've got a, a water bath. Now, depending on your product and what you're cooking and what you're sous vide is different temperatures, different time frames. So for our piece of salmon here, we are looking at going for around about four to four and a half minutes per 100 grams. Now I've weighed this piece of salmon here and it's coming in at around about 1.4 to 1.5 kilos. So um, I'll do the math so I'll work that out. <laughs> So then we're, we're probably looking at just under an hour for this little piece to go in here. We've got the sous vide machine sitting at 50, 54 to 55 degrees. 
Before the sous vide came out, I, it, it, it was, uh, we used to use ice blocks and adjust the temperature. So these, these little gadgets are, um, um, are very welcome now in most kitchens. So what we're going to do is it's simple, simple as just placing our salmon into the water bath and it will go and sit on the bottom and that tells me there is no air inside that roulade and that's what I was hoping for. If it floats to the top sometimes you have a bubble, it's not end of the world but you can put like maybe a little, um, like a little cake rack. Sometimes I sit a little cake rack on top just to keep the, uh, the salmon or your roulade totally submerged, okay? Because you want that water to circulate all around that piece of protein to get that beautiful even cooking through the salmon, okay? So we'll leave that guy in there for an hour and we'll get back to you. Okay guys, so we've just dragged this, this guy out of the, of the uh, water bath. We can remove the strings, as you can see. It's sort of it's it's retained its um, it's retained its nice shape, nice and round. All right. So what I'll do, we can we can cut it in half. Now I usually portion and cut them while they still have their cling film on. It 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 does help holding the fish. This one's still a little bit warm. I would probably recommend for a roulade, putting it in the fridge overnight, just so it sort of, it sets a little bit. But here we go. So once again, nice sharp knife, let it do the work. We're cutting it in half. Okay, so we can see there where, the, the, where it's been rolled and you can still see the nice bright green of the dill there. So the high temperature hasn't um, sent the green herb um, to that khaki horrible color. So it still looks, still looks nice and fresh. Um, it's still very moist. You can see a little bit of moisture running out and you can smell that fresh dill and all those, all those spices and fresh aromats that we put in there. So I'm happy with that guys. What do you reckon? Ready to give it a go? That's your salmon roulade. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. So, it's been great having you today, Dean. No, you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming and giving up your time. I know time's very precious these days, yeah. so we really appreciate it at ICE. I'm sure the students have enjoyed watching your wonderful No, it's schedule. been a pleasure, guys. I hope, I hope you've taken something from it. And um, hey, any questions, this person knows as well as I do, shoot them that way. And if there's any random left field questions, I'm contactable. So, hey guys, I really hope you took something out of that lesson and it's a, it's a beautiful technique. Give yeah, it a shot. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And a beautiful salmon roulade using some incredible products from Casa. We're using an incredible chef from the um, International Royal Convention Centre. Got it right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and in the RNA showground. So we've had a really great afternoon with Dean. And we've made, or he's made a beautiful roulade and seen some wonderful skills. And I'm going to eat this now. So. Go Thanks for it. Bon appetit. It's been great having you. <laughs> You're welcome. Shake, 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 shake. Bang. See you later, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.